Good morning, beloveds. And it actually is morning. Um, today is the day that we go home. Um, so this is my last one of these from uh, Indian Wells, because that's where we are. Uh, and yesterday was an interesting day. Um, the world has lost Thich Nhat Han, Meatloaf, and Louis Anderson all on the same day. Interesting. Um, the 2022 convention for CSL, which the theme was Embrace the Now, is over. Uh, and the last thing that they did was they had a number of people read that amazing Ernest Holmes uh, mystical experience. Each person came out and read a part. And then our spiritual leader, Ernest, uh, Edward Villume, did the very last part and had a couple of comments. Uh, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. It was amazing. Um, and I found out that even though I'm an ordained minister, I still have a lot of work to do. Uh, one of the workshops that I did yesterday was on suicide prevention. And the partner that I worked with was wonderful. And I've got a lot to learn. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that's some learning I'm going to lean into. Um, and I was just as hard on him. <laughs> when it was his turn so um but he really he really pointed out to me the work where the work can be uh sometimes inside some mind we do get all up in our heads uh and he reminded me that feeling work's important too so but i met a whole lot of really interesting people uh i rebonded with some of my classmates that was amazing. I believe Tom had a good time too. Uh, he talked to some people, made some friends, um, had a great time. Actually picked up a mic and asked a question in one of the workshops. So I was like, mm, he, Tom got out of his shell a little bit. So we had a great time. And right before uh, I end this broadcast, I will, I'm going to get up and show you the view out my uh, window here. But let's do this. So it is January 2020. <laughs> it's January 22nd. <laughs> I'm awake, alive, and aware. My spiritual eyes are open. Our first quote is, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. And that is 1 Corinthians 13, 12. O oh, ye people, earth-born folk, ye who have given yourselves to drunkenness and sleep and ignorance of God, be sober now. Cease from your surfeit, cease to be glamoured by irrational sleep. Thrice greatest Hermes. If ye need, if ye, if ye knew God as it ought to be known, ye would walk on the seas and the mountains would move at your call. And that is the Kashif al Mujib. Mujib. If you want to look it up, it's K A S H F, um, second word, A L dash M A U, uh, M A. H J U B. For now we see through a glass darkly. How familiar this passage is to all of us, but what does it mean other than our vision is clouded by a material sense of things? Hermes tells us that we are both drunk and asleep, that we are ignorant of God. Emerson tells us that once in a while we awake from our slumber and look about us to perceive the world of reality, but too soon sink back into sleep. And from another ancient text quoted above, we are told that if we knew God as we ought to, we would be able to walk on the seas, that the mountains would come at our call. All progress is an awakening. 
Every new scientific fact is a discovery. This also is an awakening. It is really true that we are largely asleep, dreaming away the hours. Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you life. It is indeed high time that we awake from the sleep. No one can awaken us but the self. Let us then make every endeavor to arouse the mind to reality, to penetrate the gloom of fear and superstition, to cast aside doubt and uncertainty, to behold the light which is eternal. <clears throat> I awake, I awake, I awake. I am alive, awake, and aware. My spiritual eyes are open. As from a long night's sleep, I awake. Um, there's a tradition in uh, Judaism about the demiurge, and it it's it's part of their worldview, and and I forget who the partner to the demiurge is, but the demiurge is running around, or it may be the demiurge. Well, basically, there's two of them: the demiurge and the other one may be wisdom, and one of them is running around. It's either wisdom or ego. Um, and it's also Gnostic, so one of them is running around telling us to go to sleep, and one of them is running around waking us up. Uh, because when we're awake, we can change the world. And the one that's trying to keep us to sleep is trying to keep us in status quo. And if I've learned anything from, from this week, we're not okay with the status quo. Um, I know that the theme was uh, embrace the now, but there was also a theme of divine disruption and what that means, and the fact that that's here to—that's the work we're here to do. Divine disruption. Um, the work that we're doing is to create a world that works for everybody, and the only way to do that is to disrupt the status quo. Uh, because the world works for some of some of us, and it works better for some of us than others. But divine disruption. All right. So uh, <clears throat> I, I find it ironic that I'm reading "Awake, Awake, Awake," and I'm not really awake. So again, the title is "I am alive, awake, and aware. My spiritual eyes are open." Uh, and even if they're open for a short period of time, it's a start. It's a start. So we start to look around the world and we start to see things that we hadn't noticed before. We start to notice the places where the world is thin, where the world is worn. Uh, and then we move to see what we can do there. But we also see places where it's beautiful that we hadn't noticed before. Those small, still places of beauty or those big, amazing places of beauty that we hadn't noticed before. And then we go, this is good. The material world isn't bad, but it can cloud us to where what it is that we're here to do. It can. So I think that's part of the theme here. The material world is not bad, but it is up to us to see beyond it, to look at the spiritual reality. And that means when there's work to do and when it's time to rest. So, um, I think we, we, we quote this Corinthians frequently and then we do it, and we do it wrong. Um, either that or there's a similar quote somewhere else. So, for now we see through a glass darkly, but, face to, but then face to face, now I know in part. But then I shall know even as I am known. So that's 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Look it up. See what a few lines before and a few lines after. Uh, he does an excellent job of reminding us we see through a glass darkly because the material world is confusing. Oh, ye people, earthborn folk, ye who have given yourselves to drunkenness and sleep and ignorance of God, be sober now. Cease from your surfeit. Cease to be glamoured by the irrational tree. Sleep. So again, it's it's reminding us the thrice great, 
the greatest Hermes is reminding us, you know, sleep is good, but awake is where we can make those changes. And awake means to know God, to seek God, to find God within ourselves. If ye knew God as it ought to be known, ye would walk on the seas and mountains would move at your call. The Kashif al Majub. When we know God, we are awake in our spiritual power and amazing things happen. So, awake and know God and revel in your spiritual power. Revel in that power to make a world that works for everyone. So, for now we see through, he quotes all kinds, so open quotes, we, now we see through the glass darkly. How familiar this passage is to all of us, but what does it mean other than our vision is clouded by a material sense of things? Ernest is being extremely clear there, so you know, hey, all right then. And he says clouded by, he doesn't say it's bad, he's just reminding us that there's, there's other places we can look, uh, or other ways that we can look. Hermes tells us that we are both drunk and asleep, that we are ignorant of God. <laughs> Emerson tells us that we are both drunk and asleep. Oh, wait, sorry. Emerson tells us that once in a while we awake from our slumber and look about us to perceive the world of reality, but too soon sink back into sleep. Which is that um, Jewish and Gnostic tradition that I was telling you. You know, there's there's two powers and there there's two two forces in the world. One of them putting us to sleep, and one of us to wake up. We should work a little harder to stay awake. And from another ancient text quoted above, we are told that if we know if we knew God as we ought to, we would be able to walk on the seas and the mountains would come at our call. That is our spiritual power. When we know God, when we know who we are, when we recognize that we are a part of that, that that same power that made us flows through us, there's nothing we can't do. We can walk on the oceans. We can walk on the oceans of human emotion. And we can move mountains. We can disrupt what isn't working and find ways to create what does. All progress is an awakening. Doesn't matter how big or small it is. It's a start. Every new scientific fact is a discovery. This is also an awakening. We are called science of mind for a reason. We are a philosophy. We are a spirituality. We are a science. This is this also is an awakening. It is really true that we are largely asleep, dreaming away the hours. Open quote. Awake, thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you life. We come pre-installed with that Christ software when we activate it. When we activate it is when we rise from the dead. It is indeed open quote, high time that we awake from the sleep, close quote. No one can awaken us but the self, which means that all of the people in the world can come to your door and knock. But until you're ready to step into your own spiritual power, so it is up to you to do your own work. We can support but we each have to do it ourselves. We just don't have to do it alone. Uh, one of the more interesting experiences that I had was uh, I said something in my panel that one of my the ministers on my panel came back to me and said, hey, what was that quote? And it took me a minute to remember it, but when I did, and I tracked her down later and said, hey, um, she wrote it down. Uh, I can't walk your path for you, but I can hold the lamp and light it and walk beside you. So it is your work to do, but you don't have to do it alone. So awaken. 
Let us then make every endeavor to rouse the mind to reality and to penetrate the gloom of fear and superstition, which is where that Christ consciousness comes in. To cast aside doubt and uncertainty and to behold the light which is eternal. I awake, I awake, I awake. I am alive, awake, and aware. My spiritual eyes are open as from a long night's sleep I awake. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it, is that. To awake, to be alive, awake, aware. It doesn't mean that we can't rest, but it does mean that there's work to do. And the most effective way to do it is to do it awake. So that is your mission. So uh, your other mission your spiritual practice, the one that I encourage every day is to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. What matters is that you do it. And you do it every day. You create that habit so that you create that default setting so that you are loving, kind, and compassionate for you with yourself no matter what happens because when you can do it for yourself you can do it for anybody and yes it's easier to do it for people that you love and sometimes it's easier to do it for strangers but there are going to be people in our lives that need that love need that compassion need that kindness and it's going to be hard so we practice on ourselves we create a bank so that we have that to draw on all right beloveds um I'm going to encourage you to engage your mind and your body. I'm going to encourage you to get a face full of sun first thing in the morning, which I'm going to go do. I watched the sunrise yesterday. Uh, it was amazing. It's just on the other side of the hotel, so uh, not today. Um, it is kind of incredible to watch the sun come up over a mountain. Uh, and drink plenty of water. I didn't drink enough yesterday, so and I need to be a little bit better today. Although I'm going to be on an airplane, so maybe not a whole lot until I get home. Um, in whatever else I was going to say, it just popped right out of my head. So have a great day. And I'm, oh, you know what? There is. Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you that you do live in heaven right here, right now. And not just... Because I'm in California, we carry heaven within ourselves. We carry heaven within ourselves. But I will tell you that if you need a taste of heaven, go somewhere beautiful. Go somewhere quiet. Go somewhere and rest so that you can go within and find that heaven. All right? Let heaven breathe you. Let heaven breathe you and understand that the soul, those windows that you're opening, belong to a great soul, an over soul, as Emerson says. Oh, I'm quoting Emerson now, on my own. Uh, and you'll find it. You'll find it. All right, beloveds. So I was going to tell you to have an amazing day, a magical day, an enchanting day, a fantastic day. I'm going to have a traveling day. Um, do what you need to do to make it whatever kind of day you want to have. So have a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. But whatever else you do, know that you are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always and forever. That is our state of grace. All right, beloveds, I'm going to get up hopefully without knocking the table over. So I'm gonna pick the phone up and show you outside my window. Yep, I don't wanna open the the window because uh, it, it's a little chilly out there. Uh, the, the, the amazing thing about being in the desert is that uh, it gets kind of cold at night. So, and then there's this amazing picture on the wall behind us that I've enjoyed looking at. So, take care of yourselves, know that you're loved, 
and I will see you in the regularly scheduled time, in the regularly scheduled background tomorrow. All right, beloveds? See you soon.